what's the deal with 20th century silent films? There are some really good silent films out there, though I wouldn't know much about that because I spend most of my time on basket weaving forums, spiraling into a depression as I'm overcome by a sheer anger that encompasses me, tempts me even to murder politicians and seek out the truth of why my inhibition as a human being has made me so unlovable. Even though Epstein's dead, it's nice to find comfort in something that isn't your Netflix shovelware of the week, something that makes me feel things that aren't just, ooh, uh, uh, and instead offers a glimpse into the void of existential dread that would make Kierkegaard proud. For me, that's The Passion of Joan of Arc. A film that came out during the Roaring Twenties to huge critical acclaim, but then kind of got censored and recut several times by the, the French and Catholic Church. After a lawsuit and a fire, the original negative was burned and the film was lost to time until resurfacing in some janitor's closet at a Danish mental asylum in 1981. On the surface, it's the story of the real-life child soldier that was captured and questioned due to having claimed to have seen and spoken to God. The judges and priests dictate that she could never have spoken or even seen him and that she is blasphemous. Despite the main character being a woman, I could still relate to her. Maria Falconetti gives what is probably the greatest performance in cinema. A woman did that. I know. I mean, they don't usually do that much, but they actually kind of pulled through this time. Well done, guys. Your right to vote has been put to good use. As you may have seen already, the cinematography is fucking excellent. There's a lot of close-ups used to emphasize the expressions of all the people involved. The story is told through these very expressions and it still stands today as being a monumental case of show, don't tell. You feel what she feels. You're there with her as she finds out she's been scammed by Rajesh as the iPhone she bought was less than official now owing several thousand francs to an Indian call center in Tumakuru. The director, Carl Dreyer, shot everything from the first scene to the last scene, in the right order, like the absolute artist he is. He also spent 7 million francs to build a castle-like set, depicting the real-life Rowan castle, only to use barely any of it in the actual film. Truly, based and red-pilled. Throughout the film, the Hundred Year War seems to take a pause as we join Joan in search for compassion and understanding within the clergyman, only to be put on trial and berated with accusations of bietso poster. Fun fact for you, the dialogue of the trials used in the film are actually the real words spoken by Joan, as the original documents were found a couple of years before production. Another fun fact is that Maria Falconetti never returned to acting due to the immense mental toll and anguish that director, Drea, put on her during filming. She was also plagued by mental illness her entire life, so she inevitably died because of a self-imposed diet. Despite the age of the film, it's still one of the most human pieces of cinema in existence. Nothing really captures the harrowing void and soul-crushing realities of faith or lack thereof in modern times. The loneliness and sorrow felt from Falconetti's performance resonates deeply within me, like very few pieces of individualistic art can replicate. No longer human, Buffalo 66 and End of Evangelion come to mind when I think of similar experiences that fill me with a sense of dread, yet comfort, in knowing that I'm not the only faggot going through life at such a decrepit pace. My sense of faith has always been something lacking, and something I envied others for, who had an idealization of something else, something to look towards. I mean, there's something about her expressions, her absolute look of frustration, horror and anguish that hits you right at your core. I may not be a French Catholic waifu, but I find it hard not to see my own reflection in her eyes as she weeps for the connection she struggles to grasp for anyone to reaffirm her, comfort her. A lack of Joan of Arc Rule 34 is honestly embarrassing for the human race and is something that should be corrected effective immediately. I still have no money after being scammed by Rajesh in Apple customer service, but if I had, I'd probably pull an African warlord and finance the degenerates that make this shit. It's worth the attention and if you're looking for something different, I couldn't recommend it enough. Not, not the porn, I mean the film. 
It's on YouTube and it can be easily pirated, though I would never recommend such a heinous crime as it is illegal and most definitely immoral. Look, if you're not really used to silent films in general and have a passing curiosity because of this video, or well, despite this video, I tell you to strap your Sketches S lights, Magic Light sandals and go to town. To me, nothing really touches this film still to this day. I mean, I still get goosebumps watching certain scenes and as someone who barely feels anything anymore, it means a whole lot to me knowing that films and art in general can still move me like this. It's not something I or many others can put into words. It's a raw connection to something that seems tailor-made to my weird taste, and that's this film for me. It's a beautiful look into someone I've never known. A warm look into a long-lost girl that died many years ago. Someone I will never know, but somehow I feel as though I know her better than most.